Okay, everybody, we got a fun one today. The top 10 movie guns of all times. Let's go. Okay, everybody, to be on this list, there has to be one stipulation. These have to be real firearms. They can't be anything that's make-believe for a movie or some kind of goofy crap like that. So you won't see a RoboCop gun, and you're not going to see a Jesse Ventura Predator gun. You're going to see something that you can go to a store and actually buy, or maybe not buy. But it's going to be an actual, real, existing firearm that was made famous and iconic by its use in a great movie. And what would these motion pictures be? The grindhouse action, fun-loving fucking flicks that we've always known and loved without firearms. Let's kick it. Okay, kicking it off, we got Jules, a.k.a. Samuel L. Jackson from Pulp Fiction, and he is rocking the star Model B. Or as we like to call it, the Say What Again gun. A lot of people think he was carrying a 1911, but he wasn't. It was a 9mm. It was a star, and it was the Model B. Okay, next up we got Marion Cobretti from Cobra. And he's carrying the Jotty Matic. It was a Finnish submachine gun, 9mm. It was bad. It was weird. You've never seen it in movies before, and I don't think you've seen it that many times since. But in that movie, he had the laser sight on it. He was rocking and rolling and taking down crazed bikers left and right. So, it'll always have a place on my list. It'll always have a place in my heart of hearts. It's this like oddball. You never see it use that much machine gun using a motion picture. The Jotty Matic, Finland Zone. I don't know what the hell else to say about it, but it was in Cobra, and that's good enough. All right, everybody, next up we got Martin Riggs's Lethal Weapon's own Beretta 92, that Italian piece of mastery. Great gun, 9mm, 15 in the mag, 1 in the pipe, you all remember the line. And he was running that movie, laying waste to a lot. He actually tried to take down a helicopter with a goddamn thing at one point, which is kind of ridiculous, but it is what it is. It was his multiple hit weapon of choice. The Beretta 92. How can you not love it? Actually, the Beretta 92 F, slight deviant variation of, call it whatever you want, is the U.S. sidearm. So, how can you not have some affection for it? Oh my god, you know this had to be here. Clint Eastwood, a.k.a. Josie Wales. And you know he was rocking those big Colt 1847s and 44 Cal. Come on, that thing was massive. Everybody remembers the poster. Everybody remembers the images. Everybody remembers him just walking the guy down, pulling the hammers back. Nothing left in the chambers. Iconic. My cousin was a registered gun dealer, and he had two posters at his gun store. He had Outlaw Josie Wales, and he had, well, I'll tell you the other one when we get there. I don't want to ruin it yet. But anyway, the Colt 1847 Walker, a beast of a gun, a, a massive gun, and it will always be iconic for being in the Outlaw Josie Wales. Let's keep going. Okay, everybody, you remember it, you've seen it, you've watched it. John J. Rambo himself, everybody remembers the iconic scenes from that movie. Everybody remembers him going on his rampage. And everybody remembers he grabbed the M60 from the back of that all-terrain vehicle, and he just went fucking ramshot with the thing. You think Rambo, you think either a big knife or the M60. Classic is what it was. It's burned in your brains. Come on, you know it. You remember it. You love it. It is what it is. Oh, man. Oh, man. From the minute that Cyberdyne Systems model walked up and had that shit in his hand, your mind was blown. We're talking about the AMT Hard Bowler Long Slide and 45 ACP. Arnold himself had that bad boy in his hands and when he stood there in that movie poster you were like this gun is the shit remember i told you a few minutes ago about uh, my cousin being a gun dealer and he had the outlaw josie wales poster always hanging at his shop he this is the other one that he had the csm 101 or whatever the hell model he was standing there long slide red rays of laser light or whatever the hell was going on it 
the AMT hard bowler long slide will always be an iconic firearm in the Firearm Pantheon Hall of Fame. Okay, man. Whenever you picture Max Rakotansky, whenever you picture the Road Warrior himself, you will forever picture the VG Bentley shotgun, that double-barreled, shot-off piece of Spanish-made awesomeness. And by the way, don't ever fire one of these things one-handed. Strongly ill-advised. Don't ask me how I know. I'm just saying strongly ill-advised. But that will always be an iconic, extremely iconic look, an extremely iconic gun. And when you see Max grab that bad boy and go running around Australia's outback looking for those that harmed his wife and his kid and his friends, that image is burnt into your brain. The VG Bentley will always be there. All right, let's keep hitting it. Okay, people. Okay. Paul Kersey. Death Wish. Bronson. In his teeny, teeny little tater tot model, Colt Police Positive 32 Smith & Wesson Long. Come on, man. It wasn't really like the guns that you're used to. I know you're used to guys going out there and they've got a hand cannon to look badass. But he didn't need that in this movie because Bronson is badass enough on his own. And all he had was that little Colt Police Positive. It was... Small and and prone and, and and almost dinky, but he made it work in that motion picture. And if you've seen Charles Bronson standing there with it, your ass was running. And the other movies, they started giving him these fucking ridiculous guns, these big hand cans, these stupid auto mags, and just it was horrible. The Police Positive Thirty Two will always be the gun of Charles Bronson and Death Wish. Enough said. Okay, next we got up. The high standard Quay 1200 pump shotgun that Doc McCoy wielded in the getaway. No, not that piece of shit with that bald one asshole. We're talking the Steve McQueen flick with Sam Peckinpah at the helm. We're talking the good shit, folks. The good shit. When he grabbed that 12 gauge pump from that store and he went out there and he started taking out that car, you guys were like, holy shit. And then when he was in the hotel with it, you were like, holy more shit. The high standard K1200 will always, always, always have a high spot. Forever. Forever. Just because Steve McQueen used it in the getaway. All right, let's keep kicking it out. Okay, people, we're hitting that hollow ground right now. This is where it gets really, 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 really hard for me because uh, the next two are just brutal. They are two of my favorites of all time. So I had to pick a number one and a number two. I guess I'm guessing I have to make it what it is. But anyway, here I go. Number two, the Mac 10 used by Snake Plissken in Escape from New York. Yeah, Military Armored Corporation's number 10. Really known as the M10, people just kind of called the Mac 10. Came in 9mm, came at 45 ACP. But if you look at the castings from the original gun that they had, and they were selling replicas of it, this was definitely the 9mm variant, which was well over a thousand rounds a minute. That's fucking stupid, really, if you think about it. That's way too much ammo disappearing, way too fast. The thing was kind of ridiculous. It was just like this little stamped metal pistol gun, whatever. But with that suppressor on it, and that scope, and fucking Snake Plissken holding it, that thing became the greatest, okay, maybe the second greatest gun of all times ever to appear in a motion picture. You know it, you love it, you see it, it's iconic, it's ingrained. Snake Plissken, that gun. That's why Escape from L.A. just doesn't even count, because he wasn't holding the Mac 10 Oh boy, here we are. Land of the free, home of the brave. You know where I'm going. You knew it had to be here. You were waiting for it. Don't lie. Number one, the most powerful handgun in the world. You blow your head clean off. Well, it's not really. But at the time, the Model 29 Smith & Wesson, that 44 mag wielded by Dirty Harry Callahan himself, was the gun of dreams. Everybody wanted one. Everybody needed one. I never owned one, but I did fire one. Good times, good shit, great gun. Big, heavy, clunky. The thing that was kind of funny in one of the other movies, he actually said that he uses like a, a he puts a light load in almost like a 44 special to make it more controllable. I'm like, well, why the hell didn't you just carry a 44 special? But that doesn't matter. It's beyond the point. Whatever. 
the Model 29 Smith & Wesson 44 Magnum will always be, when wielded by Clint Eastwood as the Dirty Harry character, the ultimate six-shooting piece of destruction in movie history. And with that said, that's all I can say. All right, everybody, I hope you had a fun time. This was something different, something cool, something to look at, something to think about. Who knows? Who cares? It was all in the name of fun. Peace.